MC Ray Ray. He's been called the Antichrist, a Nazi, the devil. Sean Connery called him a shaka. Michael Bay is America's most reviled working director, despised by film critics as the living embodiment of the death of art in the medium. Even though you may hate him, we're gonna teach you six reasons you should respect Michael Bay. Reason number one, Michael Bay is respected by people who actually make movies. Try and guess who said this about Senor Bay. He is a world-class noisemaker who leaves audiences feeling pummeled, not exhilarated. If you said LA Times critic Kenneth Turin, you'd both be right and probably be Kenneth Turin. Now guess who said this about Bay? He has the best eye for multiple levels of pure visual adrenaline. Here's a hint. Uh, Bay once insulted him to his face when he was only 15. Do you still, you know, you still don't know? You know that story? It's Steven Spielberg. He's pretty good at movie making. As a young teen, Bay was a summer intern at Lucasfilm, filing storyboards in the art department for Raiders of the Lost Ark. One day, he was fortunate enough to come across Steven Spielberg. The young Bay's first words to the biggest director in the Hollywood industry were, I thought Raiders was gonna suck. Yeah, yeah, Michael had gigantic Optimus Prime-sized balls even then. So, yeah, if you know more about making films than, than those guys, then by all means, go ahead and feel free to disrespect Michael Bay. So did you get that, Skippy? Uh, yeah, that, that kind of makes sense. Reason number two, he does things his way even though he knows it means people won't like him. Michael Bay is well aware that he isn't making movies for the Sundance Film Festival. In his own words, I make movies for teenage boys. Oh dear, what a crime. As he later said while making the Transformers franchise, quote, I don't see anything wrong with spending a lot of money to make big action movies to entertain people, yet somehow I come under scrutiny, like special scrutiny. I mean, what, why, 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 why don't people get upset if Dow spends $300 million to invent some new chemical, huh? Audiences like popcorn movies, what's wrong with that? Or, as he said with even less poetry, I don't change my style for anybody. Pussies do that. So if you respect iconoclasts who stick to their guns, it's pretty hard not to respect Bay. Reason number three, he's actually a genius who pays meticulous attention to detail. Wait, what? Michael Bay eschews storyboards, preferring to shoot everything on the fly, blocking it out with his actors beforehand and using matchbox toy cars to demonstrate chase sequences. When you combine this with real life set pieces that cover seven square miles, Armageddon, or shut down Hong Kong, Transformers 4, or feature a squadron of Japanese Zeros facing P-40 fighter planes and fireballs and Cuba Gooding Jr. firing a 50 caliber on the deck of a battleship, all being captured by dozens of camera setups all at once, you end up with what his crew describes as Bayos or Bayhem. The lack of storyboards means that Bay has to orchestrate every shot in real time to get the angle, action, and performance he wants, then retain it in his head for both the duration of the shoot, the editing, and also the CGI build. And on days when they're shooting empty environments for CGI to be layered over later, he must direct the camera motion to accommodate the scene he's imagining in his head. In every major set piece, he works to include something he calls his special sauce. Yeah. For instance, on Armageddon, he was adamant that every square inch of the asteroid surface on Disney's soundstage was covered in Rice Krispies in order to get the proper texture and crunch for the astronauts' steps. And as they rotted, almost every member of the crew ended up with a sinus infection. We're fairly certain that he didn't intend for his special sauce to be mucus, but he ended up getting exactly the look and feel he wanted, so I guess, goody? Reason number four, he doesn't just talk the talk, he walks the walk, dude. One for the money, two for the show. Go. It's not merely that Bay talks a big game, he backs it up, and not just with his world-class production know-how. After proving his mettle as a successful short-form director, Michael Bay undertook his first feature directing assignment, Bad Boys. If it was a flop, he'd land in director jail and likely never get another shot to make it in the big time. He shot test footage with John Lovitz and Dana Carvey, but Disney didn't like it for understandable reasons. Everybody was turning it down, including Lawrence Fishburne and Arsenio Hall, but he finally he ended up with Martin Lawrence and Will Smith. While this doesn't seem revolutionary today, having a single black lead in a buddy cop movie was considered risky. Having both buddy cops be black was considered career suicide, especially when both were just TV stars. What the hell is that? Further complicating the production, Martin Lawrence had zero respect for the young rookie director at first. After the famously combustible Bay confronted Lawrence on his disrespect, Lawrence replied, I'm a black man that made it from nothing. To which Bay shot back, you know what? I'm a white guy who made it from nothing too. I grew up in the f***ing valley. Their bond was unbreakable after that. It was further cemented when Bay put up $25,000 of his own money to shoot Martin's climax, because the studio had bailed on the production thinking it'd be a flop. So say what you want about Bay, but he'll take a stand against Hollywood racism, go to war for his project, and put his money where his mouth is. The result? 
On an estimated $19 million budget, Bad Boys made over $65 million and launched a franchise. Plus the not unnotable career of Will Smith. Reason number five, he's a star maker. Speaking of Big Willie style, Bay turned him, Nick Cage, and Ben Affleck into superstars, and Shia LaBeouf and Megan Fox into household names. Now, we can argue whether or not that was a good thing. We can argue that Michael Bay knows how to make middle America fall in love with talent. Oh. My. God. While Bay was filming the Bad Boys chase sequence, he wanted Will Smith to take his shirt off and run with the gun. Smith's response was, come on man, that's just a little bit on the edge of corny. The persistent Bay won out, they shot it, and Bay brought Will Smith over to the monitor and said, look at this, you look like a movie star. Will Smith later reflected, that was the moment for me when I learned how important single images are. That single image took me from comedic television actor to potential movie star. So to anyone who says his films don't have real characters, just tell them that he's launched the careers and salaries of the actors that play his characters into the stratosphere. Reason number six, he is a shamelessly copycatted innovator. This is the most important reason by far. If imitation is the highest form of flattery, then it explains why Bay is accused of having a big head. Because his style is bit on more than Snickers. Uh. Let's break it down. In Michael Bay's movies, the audience's perspective never stops moving. As he said, quote, I'm always trying to put my camera in very unique places to give the audience a much more unique view. Now, this can mean one of three things. One, he and his cinematographers research all around the globe for the newest tech, such as a brand new Austrian remote control robotic camera arm with seven different axes that allows them to capture a shot like this in real time, not blue screen. This allows for a sense of an action set piece's movement to be maintained even in the close-up shots that show the actor's reaction to the mayhem around them. In this instance, the camera is moving. Two, Michael Bay's editing pacing comes from the quick-cutting commercial and music video world. This particularly rankles critics as it eliminates the more traditional lyrical, lingering beauty of scenic establishing shots and often punctuates character interactions into a series of staccato yell exchanges rather than depth revealing dialogues. In this case, the camera is static, but the edit is moving aggressively. Come get some. Three, Bay loves to play with time and space, primarily racing ahead with the camera movement and editing and then slamming on the brakes with the protracted slow motion shot that emphasizes the scale of a special effect. In this case, the audience's own perception of reality is moving. Most audiences don't realize it, but the visual grammar of nearly every action sequence they've seen over the last 20 years has been established or influenced by Bay. So when we're watching objects fly at the camera after five cuts in eight seconds, slamming into a slow-mo to sell the action, we have Bay to thank for our racing pulse, whether or not he directed the movie. In conclusion, if you hate James Cameron, Spielberg, Will Smith, people with unshakable self-respect and faith in their vision, people willing to risk their careers in the face of racism, and nearly every action movie of the last two decades, then go, go ahead, go ahead, lift up the Haterade cooler and dump it all over Michael Bay. But if you like even one of those things, it might be time to start considering Michael Bay an action auteur, and maybe, just maybe, one of the leading directors of our generation. Ugh, it's, it feels gross to even say, but God, I think, I think it's true. He also directed me in one of my very first commercials I ever did for Burger King and was a complete f***ing asshole. Good night!